cooking on the trail. Spooning. The egg. Can camping meals be tasty? Chicken curry on the go. Oh, smelling nice. What if you're no good at cooking? I've got to try and arrange this into some sort of culinary delight. Hopefully it tastes nicer than it looks. A boil in the bag meal is good value for money. It's stodge and it's going inside me and it's making my innards warm, so mustn't complain. What cook systems are best for you and do they have to be expensive? How is your new stove working out? Is it operator error or is it just a cheap stove? It's hard to tell. What are the dangers of cooking with gas stoves? When it went, it just went up in flames. And can you cook real meals on a Tranja stove? What's for tea, Tom? Coconut and spinach dal. And some Tranja cooked bread. Hi, I'm Trev from Summit or Nothing, and in this retrospective episode, I am going to look back at what I've learned over the past several years and hopefully answer those questions and more. So join me on this journey of cooking on the trail as we take a closer look at the joys and the perils of backpack cooking. Nearly stabbed myself in the eye with a knife. Backpacking, hiking and wild camping have their highlights and I trust that we all agree that one of them is stopping to refuel. Stop for another bite up at which tour is this did you say? Yes tour. Yes tour it is, yes tour. Yes, and uh, tour. cheese and crackers. Mm. Good brown knife. As we took our first steps into the world of hiking and backpacking, the food we took out with us was really nothing special to write home about. We'd basically grab loads of crap from a garage on the way. Large bulky items, cold foods like Ginster's pasties, donuts, chocolate bars, crackers and cheese. And I recall that a Kendall mint cake sat in Nafe's box for those first few hikes. We soon learnt that packing loads of food was a waste of time and energy. Usually we'd take home more than we had eaten. I think sort of before we go again, what we really need to start doing is say allowing ourselves a 4,000 calorie maximum for a 24 hour period. Because we're just grabbing every piece of food available and just shoving it into our packs, aren't we? And it yeah. is, let's be honest, it's taking up a lot of space, isn't it? Yeah, well, when I took my lunchbox out of my bag, it was like two kilos. <laughs> yeah. Don't need all that. And then there's another box of melon in, isn't there? Melon doesn't weigh nothing compared to that. All right, mate, I'll take it back. I yeah, don't leave the melon. the melon out of it. <laughs> Soon, we began to look into weight-saving, high-calorie food. Nuts and oats were a good place to start. Oats and nuts, slow-release energy that's going to help see us up this mountain. Nuts and oats also make up the bulk of the ingredients of one of my favourite hiking snacks, my high-energy flapjacks. So in direct contradiction to a previous request from Trevor and from you guys to not eat Whilst filming on camera, I've been requested to eat on camera and review this lovely piece of high energy flapjack that Trevor's baked at home and supplied for me. Here I stand, got something for you. What's that? It <laughs> doesn't look very appetising at the moment. What is it? I found it hanging in a tree stand. What's it? It's one of my flapjacks. There's two in there. They just uh, got a bit squashed in my bag. But hopefully they taste all right. Oh, yeah. Doesn't taste like dog shit at all. <laughs> Mm. It's got quite a fruity base to it. It's got a mixture of textures. It's not overly sweet, which is good, but the fruit adds a nice little intermittent bit of sweetness in the base. Whereas you've got quite a nice sort of peanutty, chocolatey sort of top, and almost like a toffee flavour. Yeah, I'd rate that quite highly. That's like a 10 out of 10. I might even give it the secret 11th mark. But what if you want a real meal whilst out on the hills? Well, in that case, you're gonna have to get the stoves out. One of the early lessons of backpack cooking that Nafe taught me was to always make sure that your stove head was functional before setting out. He's having a bit of trouble there. Can't get it to... It's almost like it's... Um... What, clogged up? Yeah, it'll go one way but it won't come out the other way. But we'll come back to the stoves later in the episode. Nathan first introduced me to something a little more warming and substantial than snacks and pastries when he gave me my first boil in the bag meal. This is his first boil in the bag. What do we reckon to it? Yeah, it's nice. A bit beansy. You got you got an admirer there that seems quite interested in what you're eating. Yeah, I bet he does. Fucker. Boil in the bag meals are a convenient offering when backpacking. They come in slim, space-saving packaging and are designed to give you maximum calories to burn whilst hiking. Boiling the bags, for what they are, are expensive, aren't they? They are expensive, but 
Yeah, More protein. This is only 271 calories. It's not a lot. That's not a meal. A boil in a bag is a meal. Yeah. Although they often hit the spot after a long slog on the hills, they are no gourmet meal. Yeah. It looks, yeah. looks a bit like puke. Boiling the bags can also use quite a lot of gas too, as you have to leave them boiling away in the stove for a good 10 minutes or so. I think boiling the bags, because they're eight minutes on the boil, you're using a lot of gas. Although they're quick and easy and very satisfying to eat, I think rehydrated meals are gonna be the way forward long term, especially if you was doing like a two or three day hike. Dehydrated meals are even lighter again than a boil in the bag, having any excess moisture dried out of them. And plus, you save gas because you only need to get the water to boiling point and then pour it into the packaging, letting the hot water do the work and not the stove. Food I've gone for. It's the dry mix I'm going to try. Pasta bolognese, eight minutes, quick and quick and tasty. You just add water. So what it says here, open pouch at the tear notch. Remove oxygen absorber. Do not eat. There are many different brands, flavors, and meal choices for both boil in the bag and dehydrated meals. And some brands are by far tastier than others. If you like a little spice in your meals, the adventure foods are not as fulfilling in that department as say the fire pot. Not quite as spicy as I like it, but I guess they got to make it for everyone's taste. I guess if you was that fussy about it, you could always carry small little pots of condiments. But I'll tell you what, that tastes like chilli. Decent meat, you know, it's hot, spicy, it's got chilli beans in it. I think if you're going to make a chilli or a curry, can't be afraid to make it a little bit hot, you know? Nice one, fire pot. Well done, mate. Love it. You could also get a variety of puddings too, although these are not as nice as they sound. And as for the Exped breakfast, I have not been too keen. I had my expedition breakfast. Well, I ate half of it. It was like eating someone else's vomit. I find it cheaper and easier to buy a pot of porridge from a supermarket. In fact, more often in our recent outings, I've started to just buy cheap noodles from the supermarkets too. These are tasty, easy to prepare, and although they do not have nearly enough calorific value to see you through some hiking, they are fine for just a night in the tent. Jesus. <laughs> That's spicy. That's spicy on Whilst boiling the bag and dehydrated meals are filling, they are not always the tastiest and they can soon become samey. The potato's all right, the veg is all right. It, the only thing that's questionable about it is the minced beef. They're like crunchy little meaty croutons. It's stodge and it's going inside me and it's making my innards warm, so mustn't complain. And so I realised that by using Myla pouches, I could prepare meals at home, bag them up and freeze them, ready to take out on the trail to reheat as you would a boil in the bag. There it is. It smells nice. Yeah, it's fucking smelling it already. Yeah. yeah, mate, that's good. Tell you what, it's gourmet. Is it? It really is good. Yeah. Homemade though, isn't it? I think it makes a difference, cooking real food. Boiling the bags get you out of a fix but they're not, they're not delicious, are they? These are ideals for chilli, sausage casserole, bolognese, but my all-time favourite has to be beef stew. I've got a pouch of Trev's stew, and I've got my long spork, and it's quite a long sachet, so that, that turned out nice. Hopefully, once he's eating it, he'll be like, oh, no, this is better than a boil in the bag, because at the moment he's moaning about how impractical it is, but there you go. It's Naif. But I thought, oh, I'm taking a stew. I'd take one for Naif as well, he might like that. So, you live and learn. The opening salvo was a big chunk of beef. Oh yeah, lovely mate, like pulled pork, but beefy. I don't know what's more satisfying, the stew, or having the correct spoon to get to the bottom of the bag. <laughs> having it cooked, then frozen, and then boiled back to heat again gives those flavours plenty of time to mature and blend. Plus, there's no more hearty meal than a stew. And eating home-cooked meals out on the trail is absolutely what you want. But we'll be discussing more backpacking meal ideas a little later in the episode. But first, remember earlier when Naif was having trouble with his stove? Well, we didn't get the stove working, did we, Naif? No, it was bitterly disappointing. No hot drink for us. 
This failure led him to find a new stove and he opted at first for the MSR reactor. The MSR reactor it is quite expensive for a, um, for a camping stove but it ticks all the boxes. Solid plastic lid, it's economical with the fuel and you can pretty much use it anywhere. It says to light above the logo and to only use their own cookware. Fuck me. That's there awesome. he goes. This was an extravagant purchase, extremely expensive. It may be ideal for alpine camping for professional hikers and mountaineers, but it was clearly overkill for a couple of lads on Dartmoor. The next stove we tried out was the Jet Boil Zip. We're jet boiling the f out of it here. Listen, Nath. Let's boil. Having a race. It's nice to be testing out new gear. Even nicer knowing mine was nearly 20 quid cheaper than Nath's. Fuck you. Same product. <laughs> jet Boils seem to be a popular brand with hikers. They're made well and can pack away into themselves, but again, at nearly £100, they aren't the cheapest option out there. They also don't act as good mugs, as we both found out at different times. Biggest ever I've made, I've left my bloody mug at home. So I'm going to have to drink my coffee out my jet boil, so I'm going to have to try and uh, measure the right amount. Because you know what coffees are like when they're not the right consistency. Oh, I want to drink my drink, but I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I can't bring it to my lips. Nafe's going to use the bottom of his jet boil for his mug, but I'm just going to get my mug out. How was that then, Nafe? Well, I've had better ideas. Yeah? Not really working out for you? Can't f***ing pick it up. It's too hot to hold with my f***ing hands. Imagine if you had like a tin mug with a handle on it that didn't get so hot you couldn't hold it. That would be ingenious, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be ideal? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I reckon it would. I also found the jet boil to be a little fiddly, either sputtering out on a low heat or boiling over when turned up just a touch. Right, we're on. Boiling over. I won't turn it up, fuck's sake. It's very full, so I want to be careful taking it off. I managed to find a way to get the jet boil to simmer for 20 minutes. That's simmering away. There's food in there, it's bubbling, the flame's on. It Don't get me wrong, it's a fiddly bastard to find it and get it there. But it can be done. But it still seemed to me that it was nothing more than an overpriced kettle and got me looking for alternative stoves, something I could easily adjust and hopefully not so expensive. I found a setup from OEX that I used quite a bit. It was basically a lightweight stove head, which cost about £10 at the time, and a two pot set, which cost about 20 quid. It worked well with a more easily adjustable regulator. Yeah, I like that. It's, a, it's not like the jet boil, with, which is all or nothing. It's uh, easy to operate, I like it. It was slightly larger, which was not only easier to fit boil in the bag meals into, but also allowed me to pack large gas canisters within it. I could also reheat my own meals inside this quite easily. However, it wasn't without its negative attributes. It was a tall setup, cumbersome and somewhat precarious, balanced on top of itself as it was. I also found a considerably cheaper jet boil alternative, a little stove called the Jobsworth. This saved you about 80 quid on the jet boil. It was a great little stove and much like the jet boil, it packed away easily into itself. It came with an ignition switch, which made it easier to light. It had a cooker hob attachment free with it, much like the one that jet boil charged the earth for as an optional extra. That is brilliant. Now you can cook all sorts on there. So already you get a lot more in that little package for that money, you know, with a self igniter as well than the jet boil. However, again, it had its faults. It was a little more rickety than the jet boil. The engineering not quite so precise. How is your new stove working out? <laughs> is it is it operator error or is it just a cheap stove? You know me, no. It's hard to tell. <laughs> Because it could be an expensive stove and you still have the same problems. Yeah. You're a calamity, aren't you? It's all right. It's a bit rattly. Um, I guess the thing with a jet boil is, is, yeah, it's more expensive, but you're paying for a better grade of engineering, aren't you? Like finer tolerances, things fit and work as they're supposed to. I wouldn't say it's crap. I'd say it's ideal, really, if you don't want to spend money on a jet boil. That's going to do the same trick. Just make sure it's level. I've just had bit of an issue here with the jobsworth. I had it boiling, I had the vestibule shut 
and then it just toppled over. But when it went, it just went up <laughs> in flames. It panicked me because I'm in a white tent and all I seen was this brilliant bright orange glow whilst he was shouting, fuck, fuck, fuck. But then Nafes fell over. It just wasn't lit. Would the same thing have happened to a jet boil? But the biggest fault was made clear when the following batch of jobs worth stoves were recalled, which led me to the conclusion that cheaper is not always preferable. The last batch of these were recalled by all accounts. Anything bought around January 2021 20, or after has been recalled. So I don't know if they've sorted that issue out yet, but there was uh, yeah, some kind of problem. That being said, there are many other jet boil alternatives on the market. Nathan toyed with the idea of the ultralight stove. Oh my God, what's this new invention? What's this new contraption? He purchased the incredibly small BRS stove head and a lightweight titanium mug to make his own cook set. I found a similar setup, but from the much cheaper Lixada range at a fraction of the price. This was great to take out, especially on day hikes, but in such a small mug though meant that you wouldn't be doing a lot of cooking in them. Boiling water for dehydrated meals and coffees was one thing, but it seemed a little crammed to cook or for a boil in the bag meal. However, once again, it was a balancing act to set up, and if the ground wasn't entirely level, it was a bit dodgy to say the least. I also had some real trouble with mine one windy morning when it just kept blowing out, even within the tent. Won't be having me coffee this morning. I'm trying to light that, and then the wind's just blowing everything everywhere. The pot wouldn't stand up, and the flame was blowing out, so that's why you bring like a jet boil or something. This simply wouldn't do, and so I searched again for an alternative cook set. I came across the Nature Hike portable stove. This stove is the most sturdy stove that I have, and is attached to a hose, keeping the canister away from the stove as opposed to beneath it. This tends to be my stove of choice these days. It seems a sturdy little bit of kit, so it all opens up. It's even got like its own igniter on here. Saw uh, Outdoors George with one, didn't I, when we went on our Patreon camp. What are you cooking there, boy? You're on a stew. Doing a stew. He's doing proper cooking. Good on him. He's brought a bit of f***ing beef. He's chopped up. Sirloin steak. Yeah. Proper. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's looking good, mate. It's smelling good. What is that? I like that mug. Where'd you get that? What's that? <laughs> but enough about gas stoves. Let's now talk Tranja. The Tranja stove is an alcohol burning stove, which I had dismissed for a long while, but many prefer. For starters, it's silent burning, not ruining the ambience of the wild like the roar of a gas stove. Secondly, it's a classic piece of kit. Traditionalists like to use these and they can use them in some surprising ways too. It was Tom from Off The Beaten Pot who taught me that the Tranja stove was such a versatile piece of kit and it blew my mind when I saw him use one to cook a roast dinner. Having watched that video, I knew that I had to get out with this guy as soon as possible and learn the ways of Tranja cooking. Here we go then, right. the Tranja cooking. Tranja cooking with Tom Off The Beaten Pot. I'm going to do the chorizo next. Get the mozzarella on there. Papa. Put that <coughs> in there now. You just want to keep your eye on that. Yeah. We'll just start to see it browning. I left mine on. I wasn't checking. So right. you can see It'll here. be lovely. It'll taste like it's um, uh, stone baked. I like things burnt. That's anyway. a better side. Right, here we go. I'm going to try it. Mmm. Mm. Oh, good, Tom. Freshly cooked. Tasty. His meals ranged from simple. Cheers, Tom. Cheers, Trev. This is quick and easy and tasty. Oil in the pan, shop bought croissant, and then port salut or any nice cheese, nice ham from the deli counter. Wedge it in here, soak in the oil a bit, and slowly let it do its thing. It's a shame if you burn it. Still, still nice, but nice if you just get it crisped. To multi course spinach and coconut dal and some tranja cooked bread. So Tom, what are we cooking today? Cottage pie. This is vegan cottage pie mix. So it's dehydrated soya mince. I've flavoured it quite a lot with salt, pepper, cumin, oregano. We've got chorizo in here as well and 
dehydrated veg and smoked paprika as well. Lovely. So there we go, that's got my potato on top. Mm, Tom, that is abs absolutely handsome. But they were always tasty. I tried my own hands from time to time. The pizzas were about as far as I stretched out on the trail and I did almost drink my alcohol fuel once. But apart from preparing the odd meal in the garden during lockdown, I'm afraid that I'm too lazy and unorganized to prepare meals to cook on the trail myself. So tip the pasta in, give it a stir in, put some more cheese on. There you go, spicy sausage casserole. And that is really good. I did have a good crack at cooking on some wood burners with Nafe though, when we prepared a greasy fry up each. I'm gonna put sausage in there. Oh yeah. That's the right sound. Just left that one in open, turned upside down, just to brown the inside of it off a bit. And I'm gonna close it back up, whack some cheese on it, stuff it in my gob. Nearly stabbed myself in the eye with a knife then. If you talk with your hands, don't talk with a knife in your hands. Going all right. I'm happy with this. Look. Hopefully it tastes nicer than it looks. <laughs> A bit of ketchup. Wood stoves are a lot of fun, but you have to watch where you use them. Definitely not on Dartmoor, as there is a no naked flame rule, as there are in a lot of the national parks. So that was a quick look at the backpack cooking. Let me know in the comments what was your preferred cook sets, methods and meals when eating on the trail. And if you want to watch more cooking videos, then check out this playlist. Cheers!